How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at object destructuring in JavaScript in detail. Now, I've got a list of seven or eight things here to cover when it comes to object destructuring and I'm sure for some of these most of you haven't heard of or used before. So it's definitely going to be an interesting video to check out and learn about some of these things. Now, if you don't know what object destructuring is, basically it allows you to cherry pick what you want out of an object and then use them as typically variables or within for loops and function parameters, things like that. So we're gonna be covering quite a few things in today's video, but to get started, I've got an object right here called person, which describes me to a certain extent. We've got a username, a display name, a list of hobbies and a nested object describing the education as we can see right there. Now, let's have a look at the most basic example of object destructuring, something which I'm sure uh, most if not all of us have seen before. So let's say const then use curly brackets and say username and display name is equal to the person object. So this here is gonna take the username and display name properties and convert them into constants, which can be used, of course, in this scope here. So if I now say console.log uh, username, then do the same thing for display name. You guessed that we're going to get those two properties within the console. Let's say node index.js, and we get those two strings right there decode and DOM decode. Now, this is also gonna work for nested arrays and objects. For example, if I say uh, hobbies instead of display name, it's the exact same thing, but now of course we get the array in the console right down here. Now, moving on to the next feature of object destructuring, we're gonna have a look at uh, default values. So let's actually push this down to multiple lines. It's gonna make it easier to explain and format here. And I'm going to add another property called ID to the list. Now, the ID property is declared, but if I was to console log ID, we're actually going to get undefined. So, in this case here, you might know that sometimes the person object is going to contain an ID, but sometimes it won't. You can use a default value. Let's say equal to 43 as an example. So now if I do node index.js again, run the script, we get 43 in the console. So basically if the ID is undefined, let's use this default value. And this can be useful in situations where, for example, you're calling an API and sometimes um, a piece of data comes back under certain permissions or business logic, whatever it might be. You can, of course, use default values to uh, make your code still run in certain situations. Now, it's important to understand that this works for undefined values, okay? As an example, if I add the ID, but instead make it null, okay, this here is going to select null. Let's run the code and we get null on the bottom there. So it's only for undefined values. So let's get rid of that and move on to the next feature of object destructuring. And that is gonna be the ability to rename your properties, okay? So let's say instead of hobbies, I want to call this interests. Let's say colon and then say interests just like that, okay? Now I can say console.log hobbies and we're going to get an error because hobbies is now not defined, okay? We're just referencing hobbies in this list here to say I want to now call hobbies interests. So, I now can say console log interest and it's gonna be the exact same value as of course uh, what hobbies was prior, okay? Now, if you want to use a default value at the same time as a rename, you simply say equals and then use an empty array just like that. Now, if I was to console log this, we're gonna get the value because it exists, but I'll just comment it out right up here and try again. And now we're gonna get an empty array as opposed to undefined for that uh, particular property there. And to be honest, I think arrays like this is probably one of the most useful situations for using defaults because 
typically you want to loop over something and you don't want to get errors and things like that. So it can be uh, definitely very useful right there. Now, I want to show you something which is to uh, use the spread operator. So we can see here, I've selected both the username and the hobby slash interests. What if I now want to get everything else aside from those two? Well, I can say dot, 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 and then give it a name. I'm going to say others. So now, if I was to console.log the others here, I can now run this and we get an object containing the two properties which we did not select, okay? So we chose username and hobbies and now we of course get the remainder of them in this object. So to be fair, I think this here probably applies more for array destructuring, which I'm gonna do a separate video on entirely, but it's good to know that you can do this with objects as well, if you so please. Now, it's also important to understand nested renaming, okay? So let's have a look at the education property here. Let's say I only wanna get, well firstly, let's say I only wanna get the subject out of that list. Well, let's go inside here and say education, right? Then say colon, and then within here, I'm gonna say subject, okay? So I did mention nested renaming just then, but let's, wait a second, just focus on this example, okay? So this here is going to take the education object and it's going to only select subject out of that and bring that up into the main list, okay? So this means that subject is now selected with everything else, but it's nested, right? So you're able to take that level down and only get subject out. And just like hobbies, if I was to console log education, you're gonna get an error just like that. If you do wanna get education as well, you can just say education, okay? That's also going to work. It's gonna get education and the subject separately. Let's run the code again, and we do of course get the object right there, perfectly fine, okay? So, you got that feature as well. Now, going back to the nested renaming, this right here might look self-explanatory. You can also say, colon and then rename that particular property. Let's say field of study instead. Or now console log field of study and you may have guessed it, we of course get computer science right there and the rename was successful. Cool, so now I wanna show you something else. Let's go back up to this interests right here. I actually want to get the array length of interests what you might do is say interests dot length, just like that. However, I actually want to get the array length without doing this here. Well, how would I do it? Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. Let's have a look. Going back to hobbies, let's now say colon and use the exact same setup, which I just did. And now I'm gonna say length just like that. So what's happening here? We know that the hobbies property is an array and an array doesn't have properties like the education as an example with the subject. Or do they? Well, they do because technically an array in JavaScript is an object. So I can say length right here the exact same way as I would with any other object, which means now if I was to console log the length, we are going to get three. I'll run the code and of course we do in fact get three right there. And just like normal, you can say colon, rename it to be number of hobbies as an example, and it's also going to work perfectly fine, just like that, okay? So we've seen essentially all of, all of these things here, we'll, you know, we learn how to do initial values, sorry, default values. We've learned about the nested renaming, how you can select things you know, in, a, in a nested fashion uh, and so on. But now let's have a look at a couple of use cases for object destructuring outside of 
the basic variable assignment like this. Okay, so to begin with the more practical examples here, I've got an array called cars, which contains a list of objects. Now, these objects, of course, lists uh, both a car year and the make or the company, right? So we're going to see how we can use object destructuring here to loop over the uh, the you know each each car object and then take only what we want out of the object. So let's hop down here and we're going to be saying for of just like we would with a normal array. Now here I'm going to say for car of and then I'm going to say cars just like that. I'll console.log the car. I'm now going to say node index.js run the script and we get every object console logged on each line as we may expect. However, let's say I only want the make to be displayed. I can of course say car.make and run it again. That works perfectly fine, but I can make use of object destructuring to make this code a little bit simpler. Okay, instead of saying const car, I'm going to use the exact same syntax that I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. And I'm gonna say curly braces, then put make within there. And we can see VS Code is even doing autocomplete for us and suggesting that property. So now car is gonna be undefined, okay? And we're going to only have access to make. I'll save this, run it again, and we get the exact same result. So we can see here, we can use object destructuring within four loops to select only what we want out of those, um, those objects. And the reason why it's a for loop is of course, because we're looping over multiple objects here. If you weren't doing that, you could just use the normal const like I showed you a couple of minutes ago for the single object example, okay? So let's now move forward to looking at object destructuring in function parameters. So I'm going to probably go back to uh, the person example, but I'll just make this a little bit shorter. So let's say const person equal to, then say age 28 and name is Dom as an example, right? So now let's have a function called uh, display, uh, display, person name, okay? And here it's gonna take in an object, I'm gonna call it O, okay? And then within here, it's gonna say console.log this uh, this person or yeah, this, this person's name is, and then within here say O.name. So basically it says this person's name is, and then of course, in this case here, it's gonna say Dom. So if I was to uh, say display person name, pass in person here, I'll run the code and we get this person's name is Dom. Perfect, right? Now, let's make it simpler. Now you may already guess what's gonna happen here, but essentially what you can do is you can say object destructuring once again, curly braces within here, and you can just say name just like that, then reference name in here, the exact same thing is gonna happen and we get the person's name right there. Now, I think that there is relatively straightforward. You can also do it for uh, arrow functions and for things like array.map or filter, you can simply you know, use the curly braces there to of course do that. I might actually quickly show you because it can be a little bit different. So if you have an array like this, then you say dot .map within here, if using an arrow function, you can't just say name like this, right? This right here is incorrect. You got the you know red underline, it's uh, incorrect syntax. So instead you need to wrap that within uh, your, your, your standard parentheses just like this. And now it's gonna work and a name is gonna be available. So a slight difference there in terms of your arrow functions because typically arrow functions you can just do for example name and that's gonna be fine. But of course in this case here it's not. So that's that difference right there. But I wanna show you uh, more about how you can use it with uh, functions. So let's say you have uh, your defaults um, situation again. So you got, for example, an ID, which needs to have a default. This is where your object destructuring can come in handy quite a bit. Let's say, uh, let's just do something like uh, country and then give it a default of Australia. This is going to work fine, I think. No, sorry, my mistake, an equal sign, right? So 
if the country isn't provided in the object, then it's going to be Australia. Let's say here, this person's name is this and they're from and then pass in here the country. Let's run this again and we get, of course, Australia there. But we can see here, we still have a single parameter in the function, but we're able to have multiple things be passed in with defaults. So you'll typically find this sort of pattern used for libraries and frameworks where they want to reduce the number of parameters to a function while still keeping it uh, flexible and supporting multiple different options and configurations, things like that. You'll see these defaults being used for this scenario. Okay. Now, one last thing I want to cover here is going to be how you can essentially use object destructuring for your return value. So this here might be pretty obvious to some of you, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So let's have a new function here called uh, double person. Okay. It's going to take in the person once again. Now I'm not going to use object destructuring here just because why not? Doesn't matter too much, but you can of course use object destructuring if you'd like to. Now this function is going to return here a new object. Okay. And it's going to be the same thing, but doubled. So I'm going to say age is equal to O and then times two. So my mistake, O dot age and then times two. Then I'm going to say second argument name equals to O dot name. Then I'm going to say dot repeat and then I'm going to say twice. So the dot repeat method of a string is going to repeat that string X amount of times. In this case, here it's going to be two. Now, if I was to say uh, const doubled person is equal to double person, just like that, I'll console.log the doubled person. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty bad variable name given the function is the same thing, but one less letter in the, in the middle there, but that's all right. So if I was to now run node index.js, we get an error. What's the error? Well, undefined. Interesting. Okay, so let's pass in person this time around and we should be okay now. And run it again and we get 56 and we get, and, and we get dom dom there as the uh, as a return value. Now, what you may see is the same thing as I showed you earlier, but essentially with a function. So you can actually just say within here, age, then name, and it's going to work the exact same way. Let's console log the age and the name just like this. I'll run the script and we get 56 and dom dom. The reason why this works is because, well, it's no different to the first example at the start of the video where you've got an object on the right side and your constant on the left side. So it's going to work the exact same way. So this here is, of course, a function call. It just gives you the object in a different fashion, but it's the same thing still. So this here is very similar to what you might see with require as an example in Node.js. You have the require on the right side and a bit of object destruction on the left side to get what you want out of it. Um, I've also seen it with, once again, libraries and frameworks will have this syntax for example, build something or create something on the left side, you get what you want out of it. So a very common pattern also. And of course, in this case here, you may want to say colon doubled age and colon doubled name to, of course, rename those a bit more appropriately. So that right there is object destructuring in detail. I also encourage you to check out the MDN documentation linked below for a bit more information on some of those things. And maybe there's a few things there which I also missed, which of course you can check out um, down below. There is many things you can do with object destructuring. So check it out down below. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.